What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today We are going to be opening up a pack I believe for the first time on the series of prophecy uh, This set is interesting. There's really not too much value in it other than uh, two commons mostly uh, Ristic study is sitting at $18 at the very top uh, Spore frog is also a $4 card at common uh, and the only rare that's really in the top three is overburden Which is sitting at 550 so not a whole lot of value in this set, but uh, as always, we are going to try and at least uh, pick a pack one, pick one card out of this uh, and look at it basically from a draft perspective. So what would we actually pick out of it? Why would we pick it? Uh, for that reason, we will go through every card. Uh, and I believe actually, let's do that just in case. I think that's the correct order. So uh, we'll go through every card. And our first one here is Thresher Beast. It is a 4-4 four, four for 5. Uh, when it becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a land. Uh, honestly, not a bad common, I would say. I don't know for sure. It's a little bit understated at 5, but uh, sacrificing a land is somewhat useful, I guess. Uh, so I'll consider it. Unfortunately, by the way, I don't know this set extraordinarily well. Uh, so if I do get things wrong, I do apologize. But uh, Zarapa Minotaur is a 3-3 for 4 with first strike. Uh, and you can pay two, and it loses first strike until end of turn. Any player may play this ability. Uh, I don't like the fact that any player can play that ability. It is a 3-3 for 4 with first strike, but uh, if they do pay the two, then it's just a 3-3 uh, for, uh, for 4. Excuse me. And yes, they do have to repeatedly play it, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think I'd rather have the Beast. Uh, Latula's Orders, excuse me. Uh, one in a red for an enchant creature. You may play it anytime you could play an instant. Uh, when enchanted creature deals combat damage to a defending player, you may have it destroy a target artifact that player controls. Uh, this doesn't seem amazing. It's basically two mana to kill an artifact uh, in the right conditions. It's very situational. Uh, I think, to be honest, it might be a fine sideboard card, uh, but overall, probably not something I'd be looking to pick early on. Uh, Soul Strings is X and a black for a sorcery. Return two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand unless any player pay pays X. Uh, this actually seems okay. Uh, I know Recursion is always great in draft. Uh, these cards are not generally my favorite, but it, it's also kind of useful to be able to pull creatures back. Obviously, in Limited, the games are generally one on board. Not always, but generally they're one on board. And so reoccurring your own creatures and wasting uh, kill spells for your opponent or something like that. Uh, is definitely useful. So I don't hate this card, to be honest, but uh, I would not first pick it for sure. Uh, Aura Fracture is two and a white for an enchantment. You can sacrifice a land to destroy, destroy excuse me, target enchantment. Again, this seems like a great sideboard card. Uh, obviously, sacrificing lands is not exactly what you want to do, but it does actually give you a use for them late game if you are against a deck uh, where enchantments are actually... Um, just played a lot uh unfortunately they not they are not always played and so for that reason i don't love this but again sideboard is perfectly fine uh pygmy razorback is a one is a two one excuse me for two with trample uh just seems like a solid two drop i guess it dies easily unfortunately which is not great uh but uh it, it's it's on curve and it does have some useful uh toolbox sort of effect which is trampled that you can actually uh hopefully boost its stats a little bit late game and actually get in for some damage uh still don't like it better than the beast um mind bear is a one one for two and a white uh, you can tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target attacking creature uh I kind of like this. It's a little bit easy to kill, unfortunately. You have to wait a turn before you can use its effect, and that's clearly what it's for. Uh, I don't know if this is just bad, though, to be honest, because you have to wait a turn, and it costs three mana. It's only a 1-1, so it's going to die extraordinarily easily. Uh, you may get lucky with it a few times, but I feel like it's not going to stick around long enough for it to matter. And when you do draw it, if, if you're in the need for it, you still have to wait that turn. Uh, so for that reason, I'm probably not going to pick it. Uh, hey, there we go. Our Spore Frog is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. Sacrifice it and prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Uh, this card is probably, I don't know about fine, but I assume it's fine in draft. Um, to be honest, though, this is much more of a constructed, uh, exploitable card. Uh, you can basically sacrifice it over and over again and prevent all the combat damage that would be dealt on your opponent's turn. And it's fantastic. So uh, I don't think it's very good in draft. I don't think it's amazing, at least. So I'd probably not pick it. Uh, 
Fog Glider is a 1-1 one, one for 3 with flying. Uh, you can tap it and sacrifice the land. Search your library for a mercenary card with converted mana cost 2 or less, though, and and put that card into play excuse me then shuffle your library uh if the if there is a mercenary deck which i imagine there probably is uh then this card seems fantastic i'm gonna keep it to the side just because i'm not sure about it yet uh withdrawal two blue for an instant return target creature to its owner's hand then return another target creature to its owner's hand unless its controller pays one uh, I actually really like this card. This is a great tempo swing. Uh, I generally don't like instants and sorceries quite as much in draft, but uh, being able to theoretically bounce two creatures is fantastic, so I'll keep that here. Uh, and there we go, Rhystic Study. Uh, two and a blue for an enchantment. When an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. Uh, that actually might be good in draft. Um, just general card advantage, I feel like, is fine. I, on three mana, generally you want to do a bit more, though. I just don't know how slow this format is, and uh, so for that reason, I'll keep it to the side for now. Uh, Rhystic Cave, add one mana of any color to your mana pool unless a player pays one. Uh, this isn't great. I mean, it's theoretical fixing, but they can obviously just pay one to, to not let that happen, to happen excuse me, unfortunately. Uh, foil, uh, two and two blue for an instant. You may discard an island and another card from your hand instead of playing foil's mana cost. Uh, counter target spell. Um, this is an interesting card, actually. Uh, so generally, obviously, nowadays, the the kind of bog standard version of this is just cancel, where it's tar ca counter, counter, excuse me, target spell uh, for one and two blue. And it's fine. It's a playable card in limited most of the time. Uh, this obviously costs a little bit more, but you do have an alternative cost if you really needed it. Um, I don't like the alternative cost. It's a lot. But uh, it's definitely, I think, got some uses. So uh, I don't know. I probably would not first pick this, but I think it might actually be okay. Uh, Wall of Vipers, a 2-4 for 3. You can pay 3 and destroy Wall of Vipers and target creature it's blocking. Any player may play this ability. Uh, this is interesting. I, the The fact that any player can play these abilities is really like weirding me out a little bit. Uh, I knew that was a thing in this set, but it's just like kind of silly. Uh, this might honestly be okay, though. I mean, you choose who it blocks, so, uh, it, it basically can block a big fatty, and then you can hopefully pay three and destroy both. That might actually be okay, I don't know. Uh, Denying Wind, seven and two blue, uh, great start for a sorcery. Search target player's library for up to seven cards and remove them from the game, uh, then that player shuffles his or her library. I don't like this card for limited. Uh, this is an interesting card for sure, but I don't like it for limited. Uh, unfortunately, it's just way too expensive. And yes, it it actually kind of mills them, but uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't do anything immediate uh, to, to, to affect the board when it's actually played. So these are kind of the cards that I'm thinking about. Um, honestly, I really like Withdrawal. Uh, I know it's kind of a weird like starting card. It's too blue, which isn't always great. But uh, the fact that you can bounce theoretically two creatures is pretty awesome. The other one, I think, might honestly just be the Thresher Beast. It's just a strong card. Uh, yes, they have to sacrifice lands, so theoretically they're going to get a little bit behind if you play this on curve. Uh, and so it's, it's probably decent. Uh, honestly, I say all that with the caveat that I don't know this set very well, though. And so I could be very off basis. It could be that this blog gu guide glider, excuse me, is actually fantastic. So uh, by all means, correct me in the comments if you feel that I missed something or if I am just completely incorrect. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And of course, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.